seven, which is um, angles greater than 90 degrees. So we'll be looking at, well, we'll be looking at any angle from zero degrees to a million degrees if we want. So um, how does that all apply to tri trigonometry? Okay, and how do I make right triangles out of that so that I can find measures? So our topic today is angles, rotations, degree measures, and the trig functions of any angle measure. Essential questions are how do I find coterminal angles, how do I find complementary supplementary angles, and how do I find the six trig function values, excuse me, of any angle. So we'll start with angles, rotations, and degree measures. In trig, we often think of angles as rotations, okay? So think of that. Uh, you know, one rotation is 300, one full rotation is 360 degrees, <coughs> right? So um, how we start is with a ray along the positive x-axis with its end point at the origin. The other ray on your angle completes the angle after a rotation that's measured uh, in positive or negative degrees or radians. Today we'll be working in degrees. We'll introduce radians in unit eight. Okay, so some th something to remind you about. I've already talked to you about the standard position of an angle. You remember that one ray of the angle called the initial side of a standard position, an angle in standard position. This is zero degrees. This is the initial side on the positive x-axis. It is fixed. It does not move. Okay, your vertex will be at the origin. And then the other ray just kind of rotates around and, and then comes to a stop wherever it comes to a stop. And this is angle theta or theta degrees of a rotation. And this is called our terminating side. Let's see if I can fit that in there. Nope, terminating side. Terminating side is just the side of the angle after a rotation that helps you to measure the degree of the angle. Okay, so there you have that information for standard position. So what's a positive rotation? Oh, let me go back. Standard position is basically how we we draw angles on a coordinate plane so that we can find trig values of uh, say 120 degrees or 395 degrees, etc. Okay, so we always have just this fixed little position. Everybody starts in the same spot and we all have just a standardized way to find these measures. Okay, so a positive rotation, I'll do these in green. Uh, start at zero degrees with your fixed side on your positive x-axis. And then the other side of your angle is going to rotate upwards in a positive direction. So direction when we're, um, sorry, I got a weird little thing going on here. Um, positive direction is a rotation towards your positive y-axis from your positive x-axis. So this is considered a positive rotation and a positive angle. So remember that with a positive rotation or positive angle, you're going to rotate up from zero degrees. Okay. So this is a counterclockwise motion against the clock. The, you know, clock hands, they rotate downwards and uh, positive rotations are the opposite of that. All right, negative rotations. I think you probably could uh, guess what's going to happen here. You're starting with your uh, initial side on the positive x-axis and then your other side is just going to rotate downward towards negative x-axis and then it can continue to rotate around however I'd like it to rotate around and then it comes to its terminating position here. This is a negative angle or a negative rotation. This is a clockwise motion. Okay, so you're coming down here to negative 90 degrees or 
negative 180 degrees or negative 270 degrees or if you go all the way around negative 360 in fact let's go back to this one where we're rotating up so the positive i'm here uh, this is 90 degrees this is positive 180 degrees this is positive 270 degrees and then of course all the way around 360 degrees and then we can of course just continue to spin around that and add or subtract as we like Okay, so continuing on, <clears throat> let's just talk about um, some specific measures here. So if I were to put a terminating side here in standard position, I think I've already illustrated this. This is considered a 90 degree rotation. And if I go in a negative manner, the arrow is what indicates if it's a positive or negative angle. That's negative 270 degrees. I think that makes sense to you. Let's go ahead and go to terminating side being in this position. So, um, sorry, I get my green pen. This is considered 180 degrees. Or if, of course, if I rotate in the downward direction from zero degrees, that's a negative 180 degree rotation. All uh, right, so let's go and put our terminating side here on the light negative x, negative y axis here. All right, here's zero degrees, and we're going to rotate up and around 90, 180. That's 270 degrees in a positive direction. And if I start at zero and I go backwards, that's negative 90 degrees. And then, of course, you have your full rotation, but I think you probably get that. Um, so if we go all the way around, I'm not sure why that's not getting where I want it to be, all the way around uh, with our terminating side. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what's going on with my pen here. Let me see. So if we go all the way around in a positive rotation or all the way backwards in a negative rotation and come to rest, terminating side, you have a measure of positive 360 degrees if you go in a positive direction. And if you go in the opposite direction, negative 360 degrees. So what does it mean if we don't land on an axis, the x-axis or the y-axis? And so let's say our terminating side is here okay um well i don't know what that measure is until i get some kind of positioning from my uh, initial side so if i'm rotating up 90 we'll just say that that's possibly 120 degrees in a positive rotation if i go in a negative rotation i'd have to do 360 degrees minus 120 so I would say that that's a negative 240 degrees. Direction is really important because that also could represent multiple negative rotations many times before it comes to rest. How many degrees you turn just determine, is determined by how many revolutions you do or rotations. Okay, so let's talk about coterminal angles and, and I've illustrated it a bit here. Coterminal co meaning same terminal meaning terminal sides so angles that are coterminal are angles in standard position that have the same terminal side and i didn't i'm not really doing red for any reason other than i didn't change my pen color so angles in standard position that have the same terminal side but different measures okay um to find coterminal angles mathematically what you do is you start with a given angle and you add or subtract multiples of 360 degrees, like full rotations. All right. So what I'll do here is uh, quickly go through um, two examples here. Find two positive and two negative angles that are coterminal to 51 degrees. So we're going to go with the two positive first. So if I start with 51 degrees and I want to find a coterminal measure or another angle that has the same terminating side, then what I would do is 
simply I could just add one one rotation of 30 to 360 degrees and that would give me a 411 degree angle so what does that look like if I'm starting here at 51 degrees and I rotate around 360 degrees that will bring me back to 51 degrees and so what does that look like if I start here and rotate all the way around that would be 411 degrees if I'm starting from standard position so it looks like that all right so we'll do another one quickly so next let's do another positive so maybe this time I'll do two rotations of 360 degrees which happens to be 720 degrees so if we add that together that would give me what 51 plus 720 771 degrees would be coterminal to 51 degrees again that looks like this I'm starting with 51 degrees and I am rotating around one rotation back coterminal oops one rotation and then the second rotation would get me back to here and so um, now I'll go get my green pen and I'll just go from standard position coterminal I would go around once and then around again and stop on my terminal side 771 degrees okay so basically um, that's what that looks like all right now let's go and do two negative angles so same idea here what you're doing here is you're just subtracting um, multiples of 360 so I could subtract 360 one time and I would definitely have a negative angle here and I'll switch to red that's negative 309 degrees and so what does that look like uh, grabbing up my black pen here if I'm starting at 51 degrees and I am rotating backwards in a negative manner 360 degrees what I'm looking for is this measure in standard position this red measure here which would be 309 degrees right because 300 negative sorry negative 309 because negative 309 degrees would be 51 degrees short of a full um, negative rotation of 360 degrees all right last one here we'll go a little faster at 51 now and now we're going to do another full revolution here of 360 degrees so that would be minus 720 degrees which would give us a total of get my red pen negative 669 degrees so we have our 51 degree angle here and then we go backwards and backwards to here our measure would be negative 669 degrees okay all right so what you could do is go ahead and try to do the positive and negative two positive two negative angles that are coterminal there you have some examples of how to find coterminal angles all right and then of course you can pick any multiples of 360 that you like but I will only be doing two consecutive above an angle and two consecutive below an angle all right so let's turn over the page and look at what complements and supplements are all right so you will be asked to find some angles that are complementary and supplementary to given angles okay so let's just remember that complementary angles add up to 90 degrees and supplementary angles add to 180 degrees and so if this is angle theta then this measure here would be 90 degrees minus theta if this is angle theta then this measure here would be 180 degrees minus theta so if I ask you to find a complement or supplement I'm asking you to subtract an angle from 90 degrees or subtract a angle from 180 degrees okay so this first example here is in degrees minutes and seconds so this one's a little more complex this one is in decimal degree which is quite a bit easier okay so let's take a look 
or let's recall some things about degrees, minutes, and seconds. Because if I sit here and do, okay, I have 90 degrees, uh, zero minutes, and zero seconds, and I have to subtract from that to get my complementary angle, 32 degrees, 25 minutes, and five seconds, well, I'm going to have to borrow. So remember that one degree is the equivalent to 60 minutes and 60 seconds is, nope, that's not what I meant to put. Uh, one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. And so basically, if I have to subtract five seconds from no seconds, I'm going to have to come all the way over here to degrees to borrow one degree to get 60 minutes so that I could borrow one minute to get 60 seconds. And so basically what that looks like here is if you have 90 degrees, zero minutes, zero seconds, you're gonna come all the way from your seconds to your degrees and borrow one degree so that you can get 60 minutes. And then you're gonna borrow one minute so that you can have 60 seconds. And so what you're looking for here instead would be 89 degrees 59 minutes and 60 seconds minus 32 degrees, 25 minutes and five seconds. It will be easier to do some math if you've already done that borrowing. So this would be really useful to know. Okay, so 60 seconds minus five seconds, 55 seconds. 59 minutes minus 25 minutes is 34 minutes. And 89 degrees minus 32 degrees. It's at 57 degrees. And so the complement of 32 degrees is 25 minutes and 5 seconds is 57 degrees, 34 minutes and 55 seconds. Now with um, 180 degrees, when you go to find your supplement, if you want to change that, into degrees, minutes, seconds, you borrow from 180, and you borrow from 60 minutes to get 60 seconds. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a minute, and then 60 seconds. Well, I'm really having trouble here getting my marks right. So 180 degrees is the same as 179 degrees, 59 seconds. 59 minutes and 60 seconds. So we'll start with 179 degrees, 59 minutes and 60 seconds, and subtract uh, 32 degrees, 25 sec minutes and five seconds. So again, we're subtracting our seconds, that's 55 seconds. Subtracting our minutes, that's 34 minutes. Subtracting our degrees, we get 147 degrees, 34 minutes, and 55 seconds, and this would be our supplementary angle. This is our complementary angle. <coughs> Excuse me, so there you go. Uh, useful to know how to borrow when you're working in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Okay, decimal degree, quite a bit easier. All right, if I wanted to find the complement, I would do 90... Uh, 0 0.00 minus 71.46 degrees and then we'll just borrow like normal and in uh, base 10 so the 9 becomes the 8 then the 10 becomes the 9 and the 10 of the 9 and a 10 and I don't need to explain this because you guys are in pre-calculus you know this so the complement to 71 degrees would be um, I'm gonna get a fetter highlighter here 18 0.54 degrees and then of course 180 degrees minus 71.46 degrees and just borrow as you go and you get your supplement of 108.54 degrees and so there's a little practice with degrees, minutes, seconds, and degree, decimal degree notation without a calculator. All right. 
Well, as you see, I've done some writing on here, and here's the problem. Uh, I made this video already once, and it didn't save, and so this is my second go at it, and I guess I forgot to erase some stuff. Okay, so now how do we um, find the sine, cosine, tangent, uh, etc. for angles that are beyond acute angles? Okay, um, so why would we even need to know that? Well, the fact is that sometimes you're working on angle rotations that are greater than 90 degrees and you have to find some values. And so uh, when we're working on applied problems in trig that involve the use of angles that are not acute, uh, we have to know what to do. And long ago, it was discovered that we could extend the domains of trig functions of acute angles to angles of any measure. So to do this, what uh, people figured out was that if they just plotted an angle in standard position on a coordinate plane, they could rotate out the prescribed amount of degrees and then create a, uh, an, ac an acute angle out of that by connecting uh, side of uh, the, after the rotation, the point on the circle to the x-axis to the x-axis that they could use right triangle trig of the, uh, the smaller triangle that's been created and it still get the correct value. It was pretty interesting. So how does it go? You draw a circle on a coordinate plane with a center at the origin. You plot one vertex at the origin. You plot another vertex on the circle after the rotation of theta. theta. Then you create an acute, this should say triangle. So let's squeeze that in there. Triangle by connecting the point on the circle to the x-axis with a vertical, well, this is really critical, vertical line to create a third vertex. That's creating a reference right triangle and a reference angle. Uh, and that's what that little r means. That's theta reference. Okay, so it's just a small acute angle that you can use trig to help you find measures for the original given angle. So we're going to use right triangle trig to find angle values and side measures of angles that are greater than 90 degrees, or greater than acute angles, excuse me. All right, so some reminders, some reminders it's over here, and, and keep this small because I'm going to write two statements here. So um, remember that sine you know, so Katoa, uh, cosine is A over H, tangent is opposite over adjacent, and then cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine, H over O, uh, secant is a reciprocal of cosine, H over A, and cotangent is a reciprocal of tangent, A over O. We're going to write one more statement here in just a minute, because while that's really important and useful, uh, at some point you want to trans, uh, transfer that information to a circle and get some, use the x coordinate and the y coordinate and the, hypo and the radius instead of the hypotenuse. And so let's figure out which um, coordinates represent uh, opposite, which coordinate represents adjacent, and which value represents the hypotenuse. Okay. So it says, find the six trig functions for each angle shown. So here we have this massive angle. It's called a reflexive angle. It's greater than um, 180 degrees. Okay, so we have this angle. And so we have this big triangle here that we're trying to find a measure, or this big angle that we want to, tr to find its trig values for. But we can't because we don't have a right triangle. So what you do is you see that this uh, this point terminates here at negative 4 and negative 3. So what we're going to do here is we are going to connect this point, this vertex. We have a vertex here. We have a vertex here. As soon as we connect this point to the x-axis. So a point on the circle uh, uh, connected to the x-axis creates this other vertex. Now what we've just created here is theta is a reference angle and we've created also a right triangle. Of course that does not really look like a right triangle so I'm going to clean that up just a little bit. <coughs> oh my gosh I am so sorry I coughed right in the microphone. All right so let's get some measures or let's let's just label this right triangle from this perspective. Here's this is my opposite here's my adjacent Here's my hypotenuse. Now let's convert that 
to some other information. <coughs> okay. Um, if I measure out this direction, this is my x coordinate, right? Which happens to be negative four. Um, if I go down here, this is my y coordinate, which happens to be negative three. And then the interesting thing here is that this measure right here is the radius of our circle, right? Because it's from the center to any point on the circle is considered a radius. And so there you have the radius. And so I think what we can see here is that corresponding to the opposite side is the y coordinate and corresponding to the hypotenuse is the radius. Corresponding to my adjacent side is the x coordinate and hypotenuse again is the radius. And then opposite is y and adjacent is x. Then of course you have your reciprocals and so we'll just reciprocate uh, sine is, so, so the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, so radius over y, secant is radius over x, and then cotangent is x over y. So now that we're on a circle, we can start practicing knowing that sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, tangent is y over x. Yeah, there's not really a acronym to help you with that. So when you draw these pictures, it's actually pretty helpful. And you can always rely on your Sokotoa, always. It just takes a little bit longer, and that's okay. All right, so here's the thing. I know my x-coordinate. I'm going to go ahead and label that. I'm going to label it in blue here. So my x-coordinate is negative 4. That's given to me right here. And my y-coordinate is negative 3. So I already know those two values, but here's the thing. I do not know what the radius is. But I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find it. So remember, hypotenuse squared is equal to side A, negative 4 squared, plus side B, negative 3 squared and then we square root both sides so from now on we're just going to go straight to the radius is equal to um, one side squared so negative 4 squared is 16 um, the other side squared negative 3 squared is 9 which is 25 and so the radius is 5 all right so we have that measure and now that we have that we can find all of our our values in fact, um, you could just pull this picture out if you would like to so that you have it here. So that's negative 4 and negative 3 and 5. And yes, the negative 4 and the negative 3 are critical because you're actually on the unit circle. And so what you're doing is you're finding the measure of angle theta. Angle theta is really big. Angle theta also terminates in quadrant 3. So quadrant 3 produces some negative values for your sine and your cosine. You're gonna find that out right now. Okay, so sine is y over r over h. So here's your theta reference. So that would be uh, negative three over five. Simplify that to a negative three fifths. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse or x over radius. And so that would be negative four fifths. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent or y over x. So that would be negative three over negative four or three fourths. So you'll notice that in quadrant three, sine is negative, cosine is negative, and tangent is positive. Interesting, but that always happens in quadrant three. All right, cosecant. It's just a reciprocal of sine, so that would be negative 5 thirds. Co uh, secant reciprocal of cosine, negative 5 fourths. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so 4 thirds. And so you can see that um, you have some trig values that are negative here, and that happens in quadrant 3. And it, cosecant is negative, secant is negative, and cotangent is positive. And that should make sense because sine and cosecant are both negative because they're reciprocals. Cosine and secant are both negative. And then tangent and co cotangent are both positive. Makes, makes sense to me. All right, let's try another one. Let's see how you do with this one. So again, we have this massive angle here. Really big. 
Okay. Um, and we're trying to find all the functions, um, the trig functions for angle theta. So again, what we're going to do is connect this point here that's on one of our vertex of our triangle. We're going to connect this point to the x-axis and create a right triangle here. And this is going to be theta's reference angle. All right. So again, opposite this angle reference here, this would be the opposite, this would be the adjacent, and this would be the hypotenuse. This is also considered to be, um, what color did I do this in red? Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to remember what colors I used. Okay, so this is your Y measure, which is negative one, this is your X measure, and then, of course, this is con continues, the, radius, the hypotenuse is the radius. So let's just fill in those values here. We know our X is one, and our y is negative one, and we need the radius. So remember, radius is equal to the square root of one side squared plus the other side of the right triangle squared, or the legs. So that'd be one plus one, so that's the square root of two. So we get that measure there. Again, if you wanna pull that out so that you can look at it, you can do that. Here's your angle theta. All right, all right, so here we go. Sine opposite over hypotenuse or y over r. We'll multiply times the square root of two over the square root of two to rationalize our denominator. That gives us negative square root of two over two. And I'm gonna move that negative up front. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse or x over radius this is one over the square root of two again rationalize after you rationalize a while you get to the point where you can do it in your head there you go and then your tangent is opposite over adjacent or y over x so that's negative one over one or just negative one all right cosecant is just a reciprocal of sine and i think i'd like to flip over its original a hypotenuse over opposite because then I'm not putting a radical in my denominator when I do my reciprocal value. Okay, secant, I think I'll do square root of two over one or square root of two and then cotangent is one over negative one or negative one. And there you go. So now you've found the sine, cosine, uh, tangent of theta, and its reciprocal values. And again, this time notice, this is in, and, and then this angle terminates in quadrant four, right? And so something just to start paying a notice to, sine was negative, cosine was positive, tangent was negative. That's interesting. Um, cosecant, and of course its reciprocal values have the same signs, but that's interesting. Okay, this last one here terminates inside the quadrant two. So let's pay attention to that as we're going along. I wonder what's going to be, which functions will be positive versus which functions will be negative. I'm gonna grab up my pencil here. So we have this obtuse angle here. What we're gonna do is take the terminal, this terminal side, the point on the terminal side, connect it to the x-axis. Okay, so this is gonna be theta's reference angle here and we're just label this opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Also um, our y coordinate, our x coordinate, and again, our radius. All right, so let's see. Our x coordinate is negative one. Our y coordinate is the square root of three and our radius is, I don't know. And so Pythagorean theorem, here we come. Radius is equal to the square root of negative one squared plus the square root of three squared. I'm gonna do a little math here. So that's one plus three. So that's the square root of four, which is two. And so we get that measure there and there you have solved that right triangle. And so, again, you could pull that information out if you want to. There's theta, square root of three, negative one, two, if that's helpful as you come down here to do your math. So sine is opposite over adjacent, or y over r, so square root of three over two. Cosine is adjacent 
over hypotenuse. So that would be A over R. I'm sorry, X over R. Adjacent over hypotenuse. That's negative one half tangent. Is opposite over adjacent or X, Y over X. So that's negative. That's the square root of three over negative one, or negative square root of three. All right. So now we just have to do our reciprocal. So reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So that would be two over the square root of three. We'll go ahead and finish that out. Oh, so square root of three over square root of three, just to get the rash denominator rationalized. So that's two square root of three over the square root of nine, which is three. All right. And then secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that would be negative two over one, or negative two. And then tangent, cotangent's reciprocal of tangent, so it would be negative one over the square root of three. Rationalize your denominator, and you get negative square root of three over three. So notice here in quadrant two, where angle theta was, what we found out was that sine was positive, cosine was negative, and tangent was negative. And so here's something that's really, um, well, I'll teach you the acronym to that. Never mind, I'll teach you that tomorrow. Something else I just want to mention really quick is if you're working tonight on an assignment and you're doing a problem and you get this in your denominator, and uh, say you have to simplify, let me change this up just a little bit. So let's say that that's two over four square root of three or something like that. And you have to simplify that and rationalize it. So my advice is first to simplify these two values to one and two, and then multiply times the square root of three, square root of three to rationalize your denominator. So you get one times the square root of three over two times the square root of three times the square root of three, which is three. So that'd be the square root of three over six. So just be careful when you're rationalizing those denominators to understand first that all you're doing to rationalize a denominator is multiplying by the radical values over itself. Don't, ra don't um, multiply by the number that's not under the radical. Okay, tonight's homework is to do problems one through 27 odd for 7.3. And uh, I hope you have a really good day. Bye.